Welcome, welcome to the Moto Marketing Podcast, presented by Racer X, the podcast for moto industry professionals, entrepreneurs, and riders. If you want to grow your brand and business in today's digital first world, you have to know how to turn a stranger into a fan, turn a like into a customer. You have to know how to turn attention into dollars. This podcast is dedicated to keeping you in the know on real marketing tactics that work in the moto world so that you grow your business and help grow the sport. Get ready to learn from the very same marketing experts trusted by Racer X, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, GNCC, and NBC Sports. They'll help you navigate the world of digital marketing for your moto brand. This is the Moto Marketing Podcast. Podcast. Presented by Racer X. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to uh, a special episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Nessler. Um, before we get rocking and rolling, uh, anytime you guys listen to these episodes, you can always find the most current uh, Racer X promotion by going to racerxonline.com forward slash moto marketing. Um, had a pretty cool one here recently, and we've recently got an update. So you can subscribe today and get three bonus gifts, including the 2022 Racer X calendar completely for free. Uh, some of the other bonus gifts include an exclusive calendar, $25 Rocky Mountain ATV MC gift card, uh, obviously 12 issues of the digital gift subscription for a friend. So that's pretty cool. Um, renew yours and, and gift it to a friend. I don't know how long this one's going until. Could be Christmas. Not sure. That's why you should always go to racerxonline.com forward slash moto marketing to find out the current subscription. It also helps us out as well. Um, not that we get a kickback or anything like that, but it helps us show that we're holding our, pulling our weight around here uh, compared to Pulpa Max and, and uh, Weege and all those guys. So greatly appreciate it. Um, so wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, between now and Black Friday, Christmas time, we're going to be dropping some special episodes. Uh, we're calling this the uh, Moto Marketing mini Christmas series. So what that is, is our way of showing you and giving you guys some just quick tips from some of the folks that are the experts on my team here at Impact Results on some things that maybe you can use in marketing and promoting your business um, digitally. Obviously, you can use platforms like RacerX online and in print, great way. But what are some ways to ensure that when you know your customer is reading the magazine, they see your full page ad, or they go to RacerX online and they see your uh, your logo over on the corner? What are some ways to ensure that they're actually getting targeted and 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 being advertised to on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, maybe it's YouTube, maybe it's Google. Those are going to be some of the things that we talk about. And it's not going to be me that's talking to you about it. Over the years, I have uh, turned in from a marketer to a business operator. So I'm not, people think that I'm the marketing expert. Um, I'm surrounded by the marketing experts. So when I'm bringing you information on the show, I'm bringing you information from, from guys like our guest today, Kyle Sasser, who is one of our uh, digital marketing experts here at Impact. Um, these are the people that you're going to meet over the next few episodes that actually do what we do for our clients, get the results for brands like Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, uh, the work we do for Racer X, the work we do for Arma, the work we do for Seven. These are the guys and gals that do this and get those results. So I wanted to bring them to you. So, um, Kyle, uh, welcome to the show. Kyle, I know you're not, we just talked about this, you're not somebody that likes to be on the camera. I think most of our marketing team probably would have that sentiment as well. They would prefer to be behind the lens, but we had to bring in the experts to share some information today. So I appreciate you joining us, man. Of course, and thanks for having me. So for those that um, obviously haven't met you yet, which is everybody listening to this show, um, Kyle has been with us for a while. He went from an intern to a full-time. We have kind of a minor league, major league baseball system here. We try to groom our, our folks up and bring those on that we know are trained the way that we like them to be trained. Kyle, you were one of those folks. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and your responsibilities uh, here at, uh, at Impact? Yeah, sure thing. So I work primarily on the social media side as far as Get a, getting everything together and working on the front end as it comes to ideating and optimizing the ad creative that we put out for our clients, monitoring results, uh, looking at the data and making data informed decisions to help everything keep moving the way it needs to be moving. Yeah. Im important stuff. I mean, it's, I think 
um, people that do this for their company know, or for the brands they work for understand, you know, how much goes into running a social media campaign. It's not just turning on a Facebook ad. And, um, one of the big things and Kyle, if we can talk to this a little bit today, I think it'd be a good way to start these episodes. Social media is changing all the time. And one of the major changes that we had this year was not so much with Facebook and Instagram, but with, uh, Apple. So the iOS update, Kyle, can you just kind of in the most simplistic form possible? So those that aren't marketers can kind of follow us. Um, Mm -hmm. what happened with, with Apple's iOS update and some changes that people might be seeing a dip in their marketing results that maybe you can shed some light on why that is. Yeah, of course. Uh, for iOS 14, it's kind of been a challenge for us because with the way that Apple has gone about pursuing more privacy and, you know, allowing users to have more agency as far as what they're giving their data to when they're using Apple and progressing through as one would, um, it's taken out a lot of data that is reliable for us to make decisions and learn more about audiences and how people interact with the different creative. And it's pretty much made us have to be really flexible in the way that we respond to changes to how we plan things, how we adapt to the way we're pretty much understanding who's interacting with stuff that we're putting out there. So long and the short of it, uh, we've had to be very flexible with the way that we approach things and realize that, you know, stuff that could have worked last year, even last month, you know, that's something that's constantly changing and something we have to be prepared to, you know, troubleshoot around and find something that works and creating a new formula that adapts to this lack of information we just don't have anymore. Yeah. What are a couple of uh, nuggets that maybe we could bring to somebody that would be listening that is running their own uh, Facebook, Instagram campaigns are selling their products online and maybe they've been struggling to figure out how to overcome this. What are a couple really simple things that we've learned that maybe we could share with them? Yeah. Um, something that we like to do in response to these and even before, um, is just split testing. So being able to have different kinds of creative formats, whether that be static images, whether that be videos, stuff that can appeal to different kinds of consumers and people who are going to interact with ads in ways that are different than one another. Uh, You want to have something in place to have a tangible way of viewing those results and how that interacts with each other with the way that the, you know, sort of manual and traditional reporting with that out of the way, the split test allows you to see real time kind of reactions to creative choices and different things that you can implement. And I think that's a good way of, sort of bridging the gap in information that we have now. Yeah. Something that I saw recently um, that I think you could probably speak to is, you know, we were researching a potential client. Um, They were working with another advertising company. Um, They weren't doing it in-house. And that advertising company had one ad. The ad wasn't really attractive. Um, They were running just one single ad. And just looking at it, and the reason I say it wasn't attractive is I could tell by looking at it, it's probably not doing much for this client. And it's just one ad. They're, they weren't running anything else. And on top of that, that ad, when you clicked on it, had nothing but really negative comments about, one, how bad the ad looked, and two, like, I don't understand what your point is that you're trying to get across. Like, really, like, just not so great uh, feedback on that ad. Um I call that a fire and forget. You can clearly tell somebody turned it on and let it sit. What are some recommendations you would give somebody if they're doing this themselves to ensure that they're running ads that resonate with their audience and how important that is um, and ways to really try to make sure you're getting the most out of your Facebook or Instagram advertisement rather than just turning it on, letting it sit, and then complaining that it didn't work? Yeah, Um, So basically the way that we go about things is whenever we we launch, we like to have, you know, a close relationship and closely monitor the way that things go. Um, Something that's been so important even recently is, you know, developing a sort of structure to where you could have longstanding ads that have been running for a really long time while also having the space to incorporate new stuff that'll help not only bring in people with the new creative and the new ad, 
it'll help lift up the stuff that's been running for a long time. So I think if you're running one of those kinds of things where, you know, you've just been having it run for so long and you're not really seeing the kind of engagement you want to get, uh, you want to find something that does. You want to experiment with those different kinds of things that, you know, get the link clicks and the landing page views you're looking for, that's getting the positive uh, social engagement, that's creating the conversation that you want to have around your brand or your product and really just leveraging them as much as possible, find what works, have it in there, and then sort of build around that. Yeah, no, that's great, great advice. And you can always, when, when you start to know what you're doing and what you're looking for, you'll see fellow moto brands or companies, maybe, you know, whatever, maybe you're into hunting, you'll see people running ads mm-hmm. in that industry that uh, are definitely doing it the wrong way. So that's, that's uh, awesome advice. Um, Kyle, when, when we're uh, pitching a client, one of the things I always talk to them about is our process. It's more than just one ad. We have an awareness phase, uh, a traffic phase, a conversion phase. Can you talk about the importance of uh, an ad or a campaign, obviously, um, focusing in on one specific ad- objective? And before you dive into it, I'll kind of like lay it, lay it out for those listening. So what I mean by that is you can't just run one Facebook ad and expect that ad to do everything from get somebody's attention to bring them to your site and actually get them to buy. There are steps in the process. And the analogy I always use, um, you didn't see an attractive uh, lady at the bar go up and ask her to marry you. There were some steps in between. It's the same thing with any type of digital marketing. So Kyle, can you speak to that a little bit as far as um, some of the steps that are imperative for somebody that might be doing some advertising, specifically this holiday season? What do they need to keep in mind? Uh, Yeah, for sure. So when you're running those different kind of campaigns, like awareness campaigns and traffic campaigns, you know, those might not exactly be the campaigns that are driving sales that are going to be those bottom of funnel kind of things, but they're super important as far as building audience and pretty much teaching Facebook, you know, what combination of both targeting and creative is going to get you to a place where you're getting a lot of people coming to your site, seeing what you want them to see, that sort of thing. Um, And I think keeping in mind when you're doing those sorts of things is keeping in mind the objective. Um, When Facebook goes to send out ads and really compete for auction space that they're going to go for the ones that are able to get the select objective that you choose. So if you're getting something that's going to lead to a lot of out of carts, they're going to leverage the ad that gets the most out to carts and push that as much as possible. It might not help a lot with uh, getting, you know, a video view or getting a different yeah. metric that's on another side of the category here but if you choose the thing that is most important to you that you decide hey this is what we really want to push this is what we're going to go for if you're certain of that objective you can really leverage it in a way that helps you maximize that result and keep it pushing forward yeah yeah for sure it's uh those types of strategies are are important like I, i hate when i see somebody that is just spending money in it and they don't understand that there's different objectives and those objectives have to have a chance to be successful. Like you can't just mm-hmm. turn on a conversion campaign and expect to convert kind of in that same topic or on that same topic. Um, a big thing that I think is really misunderstood is proper ad spend. Um, another analogy I use, and it works really well in this industry, is it's like the gas that you put in the tank. So if we're going out and we're racing a, a motocross race, you got to make sure that, you know, Eli Tomac or these top athletes have sufficient fuel in the bike, or it's not going to finish the race. And that person's not going to get the result that the team expects. It's the same thing with a campaign. Um, we've had folks in the past that want to spend a thousand or $2,000 a month in ad spend, but they have all these objectives that they want us to, uh, and, and targets that they want us to hit. Um, what are some things that people might need to keep in mind or what's a sufficient ad spend if somebody wants to do a campaign from awareness all the way to conversions and have it properly funded, what are some recommendations that you would have for that person? Yeah. So I think, um, just as far as ad spend and when you're putting in money into an investment here, you have to understand that 
you know, plugging in something, it's not going to be an overnight sort of thing. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You have to be patient. You have to be able to give it time to uh, accumulate the data you want so that you can see, you know, where it's best to put your money and where it's going to be best to allocate spend. Uh, split structures as it comes to running different kind of campaigns and making sure you're putting the right amount of your budget towards this sort of campaign that's going to drive in the most because it needs the most to put in and get that fuel like you're talking about. Um, yeah, it's important to just be reliant on the data yeah. and letting the data drive where your budget's going and sort of letting that be king when it comes to decision making with that spend. Yeah, I think that's a mistake a lot of uh, even our cl some of our clients have made the mistake to where it's they go off of well that you know this thing looks that way and feels that way and and I always try to explain it to people it's we you want the ad to obviously look good, but what matters is the data. And I think that's something that we do that's important for people to know is what's more important than how the ad looks and feels is what your audience is telling us. And, and the data shows us that your audience reacts really well to this. And, and, and the data shows that they don't react as well to that. So I think that's something that is important for people to keep in mind. Um, obviously, we're moving into, you know, we're end of October at the filming of this, moving into November. It's holiday seasons here. Big question that we're getting asked a lot is Black Friday. And I think a lot of folks think that they can start up their Black Friday ad 10 days before and they're going to kill it like all these other success stories they've heard. Um, you just mentioned in your previous kind of example what we were talking about is sufficient time in, in, in giving these ads uh, time to learn and evolve and, and, and mature. Um, what are some recommendations that you might have as far as, Hey, make sure you're giving, you get your black Friday ads launched today. Or like what, 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 what are, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Because I think a lot of people launched too late to even give their campaigns a chance of success. Yeah, for sure. Um, especially in competitive spaces like black Friday, where you have everyone sort of throwing money, throwing their hat into the ring, trying to see what's going to work. You have to be tactical and you have to give yourself a chance to be ahead of the curve and make adjustments as possible. Um, I think what's most important is not only leveraging what works if you've been running ads before, but also not be afraid to stand out. Uh, you need an attractive deal. You need an attractive offer because there are just so many people that are going mm -hmm. to see this lucrative period and want to get their hat in the ring. So I think starting early, being proactive, um, and having the chance to just give yourself a chance to learn and let the data inform, you know, what gets pushed out during those critical periods so that you can see the most return for all the investment you're putting in. Yeah super valuable stuff um and i think i'm hoping that some of you listening to this will be able to take what kyle is saying and we obviously have some other team members that are going to be coming on in the coming weeks um i'd love to help you guys answer your questions if you have heard something that kyle said today and and it's kind of piqued your interest or you have a question about something um email me. I'll, I'll go directly to Kyle. Um, hell, we'll even record a video response for you and send it to you. Um, you can shoot that uh, to Luke at thinkimpact.com. It's Luke at T-H-I-N-K-I-M-P-A-K-T.com. And uh, we're happy to help. I mean, obviously, we love working with Moto Brands. We'd, we'd be happy to welcome you in as a client if you have questions about that. And if we're the right fit for you, you can shoot, certainly shoot me an email or you can go to our website at thinkimpact.com. But if we can just help you guys be more successful this off season. If you're spending money uh, in advertising and doing your branding campaigns with Racer X, uh, and you have questions about how you can capitalize on you know, the attention you're getting there and make sure, making sure that you're doing the right thing on social media so that you have both of those things working together, or maybe you know, you're driving traffic to your your page, your web page from what you're doing with Racer X or anywhere else, and you want to make sure your web page is set up the right way. If you have questions for me at all, email them to me. We can either answer them on here or we'll, we'll set up a call with you. Um, Kyle, I, I appreciate everything you do for, for our staff. Uh, Kyle's a big a big component of uh, what we're doing with, with brands like Arma. Um, and, yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on today and, and sharing some of your wisdom. 
course. And thanks for having me again. Awesome. We will uh, we'll be back with another episode uh, next week. Usually Thursdays and Fridays. You can always listen to them on Racer X Online uh, on their iTunes channel. You can watch them on their YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys joining us today. Thank you for listening to the Moto Marketing Podcast. If your goal is to get real, measurable results from your marketing that will grow your company revenue, then check out how Impact Media can get the same results that they have for Moto's most iconic brands by visiting thinkimpact.com. That's T H I N K I M P A K T.com. Have a marketing question that you want answered on the show? Send your questions to questions at motomarketingpodcast.com. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And we'll catch you on the next episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast.